Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about Hashimoto's thyroiditis and the care that you would receive in our office if you came to see me, right? So we have a couple of different levels of care. So if patients want to know what might be helpful for Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you can go back and watch all of my videos. We give you recommendations on diet, what to avoid, and those types of things, right? That's what we call level one care. Basic things that you should do in order to help yourself, right? Uh, manage your autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's. So oftentimes with level one, we're talking about a diet, a cleaner diet, maybe an autoimmune paleo diet, gluten-free, dairy-free diet, or grain-free diet. So these are your foundational pieces, right? So we're talking about diet, and maybe some nutraceuticals, Things that might help, let's say for fatigue, things that will help with B vitamins, right? Or magnesium for constipation. So a lot of different types of supplements that might be helpful, right? Then you have lifestyle. Are you sleeping well? Is your stress reduced? Is um, uh, your life going well, right? Are you, are you sleeping well? All these things will contribute to management of autoimmune disease. And then, are you on hormone replacement or not? Right? Most patients who do come in to see me are on thyroid replacement hormone or Synthroid or Armour or Levoxyl, right? There are, they are uh, taking replacement therapy hormone. So in this level one of care, it might help, help a certain percentage of patients, right? They feel somewhat better, but maybe they're not feeling completely better or it has no impact on them, right? The, the next phase of care is level two. In order to figure out what a patient would need is this. When you have personalized care for autoimmune disease or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the level two care is, do we have active inflammation of the thyroid? We need to know that, right? Do we have lifestyle triggers? Things that you might not even think about. Things about maybe food that you're eating that may be triggering some inflammatory processes. Is there a, a spouse or a child who is sick? There are certain triggers, lifestyle triggers, that can cause more inflammatory processes. So our job is to figure that out. What is the major triggers in your lifestyle that can affect autoimmune disease, right? Next thing is dysglycemia. Dysglycemia is very much overlooked in the Hashimoto's realm. Dysglycemia meaning high blood sugar, low blood sugar, or fluctuation of sugar. This can create insulin spikes, uh, increase in uh, cortisol levels, stress hormones. This glycemia, if you can manage this glycemia for a lot of these patients, they can do phenomenally well. So that could be a missing piece of level one. Another one is immune tolerance, right? What kind of immune system do we actually have? Do we have proper gut mucosa, right, in order for you to respond properly? Do we have enough stomach acid to break down foods, right? Your immune um, ability, right, an overreaction of the immune system or a weak immune system, these things can impact Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Another one is cross-reactive foods. Not being, uh, being a generalist, but more being specific, you know, what types of food? Maybe it's just the nuts and seed categories of lectin, right? Along with um, trans transglutaminase 6 of gluten, right? To be more specific about what type of food to avoid is important. And then the other one is cross-reaction or cross-reactivity to pathogens. Um, it's well known in the literature that Epstein-Barr can affect thyroid or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, but there are other pathogens in the gut, H. pylori, and those types of things can affect autoimmune processes. One, it triggers immune responses and inflammatory processes, there, thereby impacting the brain and how the brain talks to your thyroid and so forth. So cross-reaction due to pathogens, looking to see if a patient has infections that won't allow them to heal, okay? Another one is chemical or endocrine disruptors. Um, there are plenty of chemicals, and oftentimes people think about mercury as a big problem, right? Or these uh, uh, obscure chemicals that might be a problem. But in reality, if you think about it, one of the most prevalent chemicals or, or compounds that disrupt the thyroid 
is BPA, things from plastic. So if you are drinking out of a plastic water bottle, cooking in a plastic Tupperware and microwaving it, right? These are all things that can uh, impact the endocrine system. So avoiding BPA or plastics in itself can be you know, a, a huge impact on a patient. So looking for specific triggers and chemical triggers that could affect it, things like benzene and so forth. So endocrine disruptive. So what is the difference between level one and level two? Level one, you can kind of do on your own, right? Look at my other videos, look at it and say, you know, Dr. Sung has recommended this and this and this. Let me go ahead and try those types of things at home, right? But if you do those things and you've done gluten-free and dairy-free and you've taken some supplements and you're trying to help yourself, but you still don't feel good, then we need to go to what we call level two. This is more specific. This is delving into your history, getting a proper history, a thorough history as to what is going on in your life, and then running the proper tests to figure out what is the underlying mechanism. Even though you're doing level one, you're not feeling great, then we have to kind of dig deep. There are tests like Cyrex Labs that will look at gluten sensitivity uh, or cross-reactive proteins in foods, right, or endocrine disruptors. You can do adrenal panels through saliva to look at, is my cortisol levels uh, proper? You can do proper comprehensive blood work. This is an important uh, piece that many practitioners or even primary care physicians will miss. They don't do the comprehensive lab. So what would you want? I mean, if, you're, if you were sick or your spouse was sick or somebody was sick in your life, right? Would you like to go to your primary care physician and they go, oh yeah, let's go ahead and do a, a Chem 22 only, right? Wouldn't you like to have a comprehensive lab to kind of show you what the big picture is, right? Figuring out those things is where level two comes in. And that's where patients come into our office. Oftentimes patients come in, they're on level one. They're already doing these necessary things in their life, but they don't understand why they still feel poor or uh, sick. Right? So we're trying to figure out what the mechanisms are and then run the proper testing to figure out what we need to do and then eliminating those compounds or changing uh, food uh, dietary regimens and so forth. So it's very important to really dig deep. Right? Don't give up just because you did, oh, I did gluten-free, it didn't work for me. There's more to this. Right? There's more to this game and there's levels of game. Right? where a patient or a practitioner can take you to the next level. Right? It's very important for you to do that. Okay? And I'd like to give a shout out to Dr. Karazian, who's given me a lot of this information and I'm sharing it with you. And my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.